Alfred Hitchcock used chocolate syrup for the blood in his classic film, Psycho. Director Sam Raimi used corn syrup and red dye for his cult horror flick, The Evil Dead. You tell me this in my senior year of high school. Of course, I already know what substance was used for blood in what movies. I am the, I am our school's, uh, I am the president of our school's AV club. Horror movies are my bread and butter. All us nerds love horror movies. We watch them during sleepovers when our eyes bulge from too much caffeine and after playing so many hours of GoldenEye. We still call them sleepovers. <laughs> we let you impart your bits of trivia, trivia that we already know, because you are the new girl and you are hot. Your ass and what you look like naked are what we talk about when the scary movies are finished. And why you even talk to us is beyond comprehension if you only knew what we said about you at the sleepovers. You are the first girl member of the AV club. You are a gem, untarnished by the cliques and prejudices of our school. You dig nerds. You give us the confidence reserved for the cool kids. With you around, we are the cool kids. You are an incredible actress. Because of you, our zombie movies turn into romantic comedies. We write more kissing scenes. Yes, this is the scene where you find out your father is terminally ill, and yes, there does need to be kissing in it. <laughs> you make the rounds among the AV club. You get with Jeff first. He's the gangly one. He tells us about your underwear, but don't worry because he's totally respectful about it. <laughs> you move on to the short guy, and then the goth kid. Bless your heart, you even make out with a kid who likes the Matrix sequels. You end up with Wade, something none of us expect because Wade isn't really part of the AV club. He's a tan, muscular skateboarder with the best afro a white kid could hope for. He's a nice enough guy and agrees to be in our films once he notices you. Ever since you arrived, more people have taken an interest in the AV club. We put Wade in movies to play the hunk. I guess it's not surprising that you end up with him. Now, the jokes you tell aren't funny. The movie trivia you tell us, we already know it. Your acting kind of sucks now, too. When Wade gets drunk at parties, he talks about how hot your ass looks, and while, yeah, that's true, he also tells us that the first time you had sex with him, you said, oh, Wade, just stick it in there. <laughs> he says it with his eyes closed in that fake seduction of porn stars. The impression is hilarious. We stop putting you in our movies. You're too busy anyway, hanging out with Wade, doing boyfriend-girlfriend stuff. Our movies become scary again, and the level of gore that goes into them is unprecedented. <laughs> Alex Dyer is not part of the AV club, but he might as well be. He's a loner with few friends and a penchant for video games. It's not that he's antisocial, just had the misfortune of parents who let him wear sweatpants too late into middle school and he's carried their, that reputation with him. We don't know why Alex is riding his bike alone that night after graduation, but he's weird and him being alone, well, that's kind of expected, isn't it? Besides, we're still obsessed with you, and we know where you're going. You are going to a party in the rich neighborhoods because the movies we've put you in have made you popular. You and Wade and a car full of friends are on your way to drink and commit little obscenities in a fashion usually reserved for the overprivileged. It's a big night for you. No wonder you don't want any of us to come. The roads in that neighborhood are wide and seem to perpetually slope downward, perfect for a bike ride at night. The breeze that comes off the golf course pond feels so good through your hair, especially during those high mountain summer evenings when the dry air just holds you after a brutally hot day. It's easy to imagine what Alex looks like when the car full of kids, eager to get their drink on, the car you are riding in, pulls up alongside him, soaring down the road on a 10-speed, wind pushing his hair. It's easier to imagine him like that than the reality of him slumped over the bars, head down, pedaling like an awkward loner without rhythm or fanfare. We like to paint the, de we, we like to paint the departed with heroic colors. A race breaks out between your car and Alex, a friendly race capped off by that 25 mile per hour residential speed limit. 
Even the word race seems too competitive. With a 10 speed, 25 miles per hour is cake. The two of you, car and bike, just want to be parallel forces of moving, boisterous youth. These moments before he crashes might be the only time that Alex Dyer has peers. Alex travels at 25 miles per hour when he, hit, when he hits the parked car. It might be his general sulky demeanor that keeps his eyes off the road, but my guess, he's probably looking at you. The impact lifts him off the bike and he ricochets across the window. It's either a shard of broken glass or a metal edge that rips his throat open and bleeds him dry. I hear you never make it to that party. You tell us that your friend stops the car and you run out to help the dying boy. You cradle his head off the ground. It doesn't matter that his blood gets on your party dress. You tell us it looked exactly the same as the red number 40 food color we use in our movies. You see the glint in his eyes and he whispers, thank you, as the last of his, as the last of his life slips out of him. You tell us that, it, that he had a look of calm acceptance, that he looked happy to be held in the last moments of his unremarkable life. You say this with an air of self-sacrifice, except none of it's true. I learned from Mrs. White, a neighborhood mom, that she is the first responder to that tragedy. She's the one who finds Alex. She's the one who calls 911, while you and your friends will stay in the car. The next day, you have your mom call Mrs. White to preemptively accuse her of lying about what happened that night because how dare Mrs. White have a different account than Park City High School's bright and shiny star? I only hope that you do this in a panic. Have your mom called to acquit you from blame because it makes my skin crawl to imagine that you think Miss White would steal your spotlight. Look, no one blames you. It's a freak accident, the consequence of being young and reckless. No one even blames you for staying in the car because heroism is rare in those situations. Shock is more common. But when Blake Dyer, Alex's brother, stands up at the funeral and calls you out by name, practically claiming that you alone ushered him through those heavenly gates, that I cannot forgive. He even quotes the part about Alex's alleged last words, thank you, said to you, for delivering him from his pain. I turn around and look at you, three pews back, and you don't even make eye contact. Hitchcock used chocolate syrup for blood. Ramey used corn syrup. You know this because, for you, death needs to be sweetened. We don't ask you to be in movies anymore because we don't make movies anymore. We don't make, movie, we don't make movies anymore because the monsters from our films became real. Mostly, we don't ask you to be in movies because you have no fucking idea what blood looks like, and you never did. Thank you. Brian Bradford. Happy New Year.